Hello, everyone. This is JT Keating with Imperium. Thank you for joining us for another webinar. Um, this, uh, this topic, as people start rolling in, um, this, this topic has been one that uh, clearly has picked up a ton of momentum uh, across the market, um, even before the pandemic. But once the pandemic hit and remote working became uh, standard fare, um, this became a very, very hot topic. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this. We're going to dive into this and we're going to talk about the top threats. Uh, we've got the top four threats, but we're actually going to kind of extend that because there's actually more than that um, when you really kind of slice and dice it. Um, standard uh, perfunctory conversation. Um, there will be an archive version of this up both, uh, within a day or so on the website. We can also make slides available to people that are interested. And of course, we're here to, uh, to help you guys in any way, shape or form. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we, we try to keep the, the content to less than 30 minutes. Um, we find that that's a, an effective amount of time and there's no reason to kind of draw it out. If you have questions, please put it in the Q&A capability um, and uh, we'll address those at the tail end. If there aren't any questions because we're so com you know, completely crystal clear in everything we do, um, then we'll just give you uh, some time back. We don't make questions up. We don't, we don't believe in that. Um, so uh, for this session, um, we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to kind of lead into it, kind of explain kind of the nature of what we're dealing with here. And then Kern's actually um, going to uh, be helping actually show some specific examples of, of how we actually play with this. This is not designed to be a product pitch. This is designed more of an educational piece around the problems and the threats that we're facing. Um, so I mentioned Kern. Um, Kern Smith is our uh, VP of Solutions Engineering here in North America. Kern has worked with zillions of different customers, and he actually even came originally from the MDM world. So Kern, thanks, thanks for joining me per usual. Pleasure to be here, JT. Thanks for having me. Likewise. And by the way, if anybody is a big Duke fan, um, you and Kern can geek out together. I hear that they have a decent basketball team. So there's a little side note for you right there. So Let's, let's, let's dive into this whole thing, right? Um, as we all know, and this is uh, what we lovingly refer to at Zimperium here as a BFO, uh, blinding flash of the obvious, um, that is the world changed. Um, and I mentioned it earlier, the world changed right about this time last year. And overnight, everybody was working from home and everybody was also um, doing uh, uh, remote education overnight on Chromebooks, um, it, and it all fundamentally changed. Now, when it comes to, to mobile devices and enabling mobile applications and enabling mobile initiatives, that's actually been going on for quite some time. So uh, I mentioned this is not a product pitch, but um, Zimperium is protecting literally tens of millions of endpoints around the world with major enterprises, major government institutions. and a large part of it has to do with these initiatives. So every one of these initiatives, this is not just a, you know, kind of a throw it out there, kind of, you know, hypothetical, act like I'm a big luminary kind of thing. This is real world stuff um, that we're protecting every day. And we think the key is that there's these, these digital transformation initiatives. It's not that somebody just got out of bed one day and said, hey, let's just, let's just do mobile for mobile. What it is, is we're doing things like remote working that happened overnight, um, but it was kind of percolating along even before there. BYOD, right? Especially as we dive into this, this topic, the movement towards bring your own device and enabling that and having cost savings from a corporate standpoint, better user satisfaction from an employee standpoint, that was there. Zero trust is coming up. Corporations that are realizing that the, you know, producing mobile apps is a major part of their initiative, compliance mandates, HIPAA, PCI, et cetera. These are just some examples of digital transformation initiatives, which are, which are really the key. That's, that's, that's at the high level of what's going on, right? And when we focus on O365 in particular, it, it, it's related to a couple of these major initiatives. So, as everybody's working remotely, as everybody's working on both corporate or GFE, if you're in the government space, um, government furnished equipment, um, or you know the BYOD side, one of the first things you do is you enable O365. You enable productivity apps 
uh, and specifically, even just right off the bat, Outlook and Teams, um, just you know, right off the bat, especially in this in this world. So here's these initiatives, and O365 is at the core. Mobile devices are enabling these initiatives. And why do they need protecting, right? Well, and then we're going to get into what do they need protecting from, right? Why, why do they need protecting? Well, first of all, the majority of endpoints accessing the enterprise today are mobile. And they have almost no protection on them. What they do have on them is, on average, 80 apps, five to 10 of which, including O365, are business productivity apps. And that's growing especially in the remote working world. And as we start heading towards zero trust and stuff, the number of apps, business apps that are being delivered and accessible on mobile devices continues to increase. So, and these mobile devices are also being used for digital IDs. We all know multi-factor authentication, everything on those lines. So you basically have these devices that are spending all this time outside of protected corporate networks in the hands of users who are the ones who usually make the worst decisions anyway with increasing ability to access business resources, whether it's directly through the apps or indirectly through being digital IDs, and there's no protection on them. So of course, the bad guys know this. So that's why they're going after these mobile devices. And, and what, what are the actual risks and threats, right? Who are we protecting you from? I mentioned we're going to talk about the, the four threats here real quick, and then Kern's going to uh, is going to show kind of how these pieces all fit together, specifically around O365. But the first thing is that we need to be protected from attackers, but we also really need to be protected from our employees. Um, you know, ask any security professional, I'm old, I've been doing this for quite some time, um, and a carbon-based life form has always been the biggest risk to an organization, human beings. Well, human beings are the admin, the employees are the admins of these devices that we're putting O365 on. There is no central patch management system. They decide what networks they're connecting to. They decide what apps they're installing. You know, they don't update the phone or they update the tablet because eh, it might slow it down. You know, don't want to mess up Candy Crush. Um, so we're not going to update to the latest version of OS, right? So, so we have to Protect, and then the apps they install, I mentioned there's 80 apps on average. A huge chunk of those apps have security and privacy risks. Uh, you know, this is not part of, of today's session, but um, it was announced in Wired Magazine last week. It's actually, we announced it on our blog. Another example of security and privacy risks in mobile apps themselves. And so we announced that we literally found thousands of mobile apps, traditional security, you know, uh, legitimate apps that have huge configuration issues that are leaving all of their data exposed in the cloud. We have a webinar on that on the 24th, if anybody's interested in, in coming to that. But these are apps that the employees are installing onto these devices that we need to be protected from, right? So, and that's that's one of those, th th that's two bonus threats right there, your employees and, uh, and um, uh, sensitive or, or um, leaky apps, basically. Um, but then there's the attackers, right? And we need to protect against the attackers uh, and particularly on, on these approaches. So what are the things we need to protect uh, protection from? What are the attackers using? And um, Kern and I were actually on the phone earlier today with the, the MITRE guys about the MITRE attack framework. And, and these are, which we're big fans of, these are some of the elements that fit into that, that framework, right? One of the time-tested laws is persistence. For as long as security or bad guys have been going after devices, they want to be persistent as long as humanly possible. On mobile, the only way to really be consistently persistent is to in some way, shape, or form compromise the device or elevate privileges. So on mobile, if you're, if you're an app, which I'll talk about here in a second, you're in a container. You can cause problems within your container, but you need to break out of the sandbox, break out of the container and do something to elevate privileges above and beyond that container in order to, to really be persistent and to, to really weaponize a device. So the end game is a device exploit, compromise, something along those lines. But you don't usually start there. The other three threats 
to O365. And, and all of this fits into that exact framework, which Kern's going to start showing here in a second. The, the other three are, are have their own risks by themselves, but they're also conduits or pipelines in order to get to that ultimate goal of device persistence. The first one is malicious apps. Okay, we all know, we've all heard about malicious apps. Um, and like the majority of the malicious apps we see are actually really focused on fraud, bank bot, BlackRock, that, that sort of stuff. But they can be a delivery mechanism to, to compromise the device. The next vector, which is huge, is phishing. And phishing, when it comes to the O365 part, there's, there's the, the, uh, the fact that a, a website, a malicious website, that a phishing website can deliver an exploit to take over a device is, is part of it. The other part of it though is we've seen significant number of phishing attacks where the O365 apps are the actual focus. Matter of fact, we did a, a phishing webinar that you can go back and, and check out at the end of January. Uh, and we talked about our phishing data from 2020 and we looked at it on a worldwide basis but then we also zeroed in regionally. And in North America, for instance, O365, Outlook, a couple of the other brands were in the middle. They were the most fished brands. So from an O365 risk standpoint, how do I protect against these? That is a, that is a huge vector. And then the last like kind of major vector you need to worry about, especially as everybody's spending all their time outside of protected corporate networks, is the network itself. I and mean, one of the dumbest things about smart devices is they connect to the network and they introduce themselves, not the other way around. So it, your phone literally walks up to every network and goes, hey, are you Starbucks? And all the network has to do is say, well, yes, I am. So these are the main attack vectors and the main approaches that we're concerned about when it comes to O365. And we're gonna start talking about, okay, we're understanding this, we're gonna keep slicing and dicing into it, but now what do we do about it, right? But Kern, before, before we pivot over to what do we do about it, um, any, any additional thoughts, comments, or maybe even some experiences from some of our existing customers um, in terms of, of these risks and O365? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, to be candid, a, a lot of customers are, especially in this day and age, it's been a scramble to focus around enablement, right? Because as um, a lot of these workflows have moved to uh, the cloud and to Office 365, the type of data that is available to access uh, on the mobile device, it, there's really no difference between that and a traditional uh, PC desktop laptop from just a pure uh, bits and bytes standpoint. So the challenge for most organizations is you know, identifying what are the risks that are inherent on these devices, especially as we get into uh, BYO enablement where you know, previous uh, lockdown controls that may have been enabled by MDMs really can't be done uh, for various reasons, be it compliance, be it privacy rights, be it uh, just general usability uh, on BYO or corporate devices. So uh, giving organizations and giving them the tools to understand where their risks exist at from what could be installed or being accessed on the device to then also giving them visibility and remediation to active threats. Uh, for example, JT, as you alluded to, spear, spear phishing campaigns or right. more targeted attacks where attackers are trying to gain a foothold on the device to some level of persistence and then use that trust that the device has been granted just by default because it's been enabled to then do a lateral movement to other systems because of all the interconnectivity of, of these devices and the kind of the default trust that's given to them, but just because the user was able to sign in, essentially. So it's just that level of visibility and the remediation around what's going on out there, either for generic risk or targeted attacks, that's really driving a lot of these conversations and a lot of this need. Yeah, no, you're you're, you're spot on. And um, and and by the way, we've got uh, we already have some great questions that have uh, that have come rolling in that we're going to that we're going to be addressing at the tail end. Um, one of them wasn't a question. Um, one of them was literally just, and I can see you're responding to it, Kern. Just sympathy for Duke basketball. Um, so, um, but the rest of them, a large chunk of the rest of them, have to do with okay, kind of like where where do we go from here? Have we seen some of these exploits? We're gonna come back to some of these, but also like, what is, what is Microsoft's role in this? Cause obviously it's Microsoft O365, right? Um, and, uh, and how are we working with them, which we are actively and have been actively working with them um, in many ways. And so 
it's a it's a it's a great transition. The one thing I'll, I'll say just right up front is the fact that Microsoft has been spending so much time with us and, and others um, to solve this problem reinforces this slide. It re Microsoft has a lot of things to do. Um, and the fact that Microsoft went out of their way and spent significant and still is spending significant amount of time and resources and energy on how do we protect O365, not only on traditional, but also on mobile. And then we're gonna talk about conditional access and zero trust here, but the fact they're expending all those resources is just further reinforcement of the need to, to do what we're talking about, which is protecting O365 against these, against these threats. So please keep throwing the questions in, I'm loving them. So what, what do people need? And again, this isn't, this isn't a product pitch, but let's give you the framework of how do you go about solving these problems. For, for everybody that's familiar with the traditional approaches, I mean, you've got unified endpoint management now, which is the old MDM and system management all kind of coming together, right? So all the guys that were traditional MDMs, including Microsoft Intune, Workspace ONE, uh, you know, Mobile Iron, you know, they've all now morphed into unified endpoint management, giving one common framework for management, right? If you're familiar, which most people on this call are, because um, I really looked at who was registering for it, endpoint security, you've got traditional EPP slash EDR solutions. Gartner calls the equivalent for mobile MTD. Uh, again, one of the conversations Kern and I were having with the, with the MITRE guys earlier is there's the MITRE attack framework, which is amazing. And we've used it on endpoints for years. There's also the MITRE attack framework for mobile. And we are having discussions about should there be one. Um, and in our opinion, Kern and I, when we were talking uh, with, with the, the team is currently they should still be different because mobile is different. Operating system is locked down. All apps are in containers. You know, the users, the admin, there, there are different things that, that you have to account for differently, um, not only in terms of threats, but also in terms of how you can actually address them. So MTD is the equivalent of EPP EDR. And we work with all the major UEMs to, uh, to actually, um, you know, for both pushing applications out as well as remediation and policies. And Kern's gonna show you some of that. And we also work with, as a part of unified endpoint management, there's the MDM component for managing the full device, if it's corporate owned, for instance, there's also MAM for BYOD. And, and we're gonna spend time on, on, okay, if I don't control that whole device, how can I actually control access to my apps, in this case, O365, in a way that protects the enterprise? So this is the Gartner framework. We mentioned the zero trust side of things, right? And, uh, if, you, if you've heard from Microsoft, and I, I, I would assume most people on this call have heard from Microsoft, you probably have heard conditional access, conditional launch, those type of terms. In my mind, and I'll kind of step through this and then see what, what Kern thinks, in my mind, conditional access and zero trust are very linked, right? They're, 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 they're different terms, but they're very linked. And at its core, what is, you know, what is zero trust? And first of all, zero trust in my mind, and again, this is sample size n equals one, and we'll get Kern's take on this. Zero trust to me is more a framework than like a product, right? The, in order to pull off zero trust, you actually have to have multiple components. But at its core, you kind of need to understand about the user. You also kind of need to understand about the device that's kind of coming in. And then based on your rules, then you can actually decide what policies and enforcement you're going to have in terms of what you're going to give them access to, right? So zero trust, conditional access, when it comes to protecting O365 against the attacks we're just talking about, this is at its core. This is at its core. So got all those threats. Once they happen, based on who the user is, based on the device, what am I going to give them access to? So Kern, any thoughts or comments on this or agreements, disagreements? Yeah, no, I think I think specific with mobile, um, the evolution, if you, if you think about it, was that trust was always assumed, right? Mobile always came down to trust, right? If you were managing the device from an MDM perspective, the user had to trust the profile or trust the app that became the device admin. And then there was this defaults of trust that were given to that. 
Um, and there was kind of a perception of, hey, if the device is managed or if I've got the sign in on it, I'm just by default going to assume that these mobile devices should always be trusted just because they're mobile. What we're seeing now is that evolution of because of the type of data that these devices are just able to access and the entitlements that they're given on, on it and the, the impact of the lateral movement from the mobile device and also the evolution of mobile threats that we're seeing as more and more uh, people are getting visibility on this, they're now seeing this is actually happening. Um, that idea of trust by default has kind of gone out the window. It's now we need to enable the device. We also need to have a, another mechanism to say, look, are all the security settings, are all of the um, enablements that I'm trying that I'm tying to that device, should I still allow that to take place? It's basically a let's continue to verify if the state of the device or the state of configurations or things that are installed in the device or the state of the connection of the device, is that still good for me to continue to allow that device to operate or access these different areas? So it's going from a trust by default to now, look, we want to enable by default but have some mechanism of validating should that device still be trusted or not. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And so if we if we now shift and let's let's show them, Kern, what you were just talking about. I mentioned that this is not a product presentation, right? We are the enterprise leader in mobile threat defense. We've got all these huge advantages that come from the fact that we're the one who do all of our detection on device. So we that's fine. We can we can talk to you guys about that later. But but for this, to directly back to Kern's point, when it comes to the, the, the device attestation component in zero trust and or conditional access, again, interchangeable kind of right now, right? So we can detect things. We work with Microsoft on both the managed and the unmanaged side through Endpoint Manager slash Intune to be able to, to take some actions off of that. So, so Kern, um, would you like to take over showing and, uh, yeah. you know, and kind of show folks what we're talking about here real quick? Absolutely. And, and you know, because we're talking about uh, Office 365, what we wanted to kind of show was just, look, here's simple steps that can be done to basically start getting you visibility and adopting, you know, that, uh, that aspect of, hey, should I continue to trust this device as it's being enabled either from an MDM or MAM perspective to access the corporate data, et cetera. So really what we start off with is integration with uh, Microsoft Endpoint Management Service. And at this point, it's very straightforward. You just click and follow right here. Um, and by the way, can everybody see my screen right now? Just wanna make sure that we're seeing the right one. Yes, we, we can see okay. it. Okay, perfect. And this is, this perfect. is term because you know, one, of, one of the questions a lot of people are asking is, okay, so, you know, how, how quickly could I be up and going and protecting mobile devices? Exactly. Right, you know. Well, and, and that's kind of the biggest uh, question about is, hey, what's the implementation time? What, what's the impact here to get this rolled out? Well, what I'm demonstrating right now is, look, doesn't matter how you're managing the device, be it MDM or MAM only, or if you're using both MDM or MAM controls, or even if you're enabling Office 365 with a third party MDM, being able to adapt to those personas is kind of critical on all of this. So what we can do is very quickly um, set up the integration to get the consoles talking at this point. And then you can specify what groups you want to enable or what groups you want to protect, be it executive groups, BYOD, or just in general, all of these areas. So you click finish and you're done. But the next component is, hey, how do I enforce or roll this out across the board? And part of that is our integration and the great partnership that we've had with Microsoft in creating different things around conditional launch, conditional access controls, but also app protection policies. And because we're talking about Office 365 and the enablement, one of the things is, hey, look, we need to make sure that we can trust the device before the user is able to access things like Outlook or Teams. And that can be very easily implemented with an app protection policy to say, look, for iOS, Android, et cetera, it doesn't really matter. We can start specifying what apps do we actually want to protect at this point? What is the management of the device, et cetera? And then go from there. So if I want to say uh, protect Outlook as an example and use this as a mechanism to, to say, what is it that I want to protect? What is it that I want to enforce? Those type of things. We can go ahead, select Outlook, hit next. Go ahead and set whatever your DLP policies that are specific to Outlook around copy, paste, et cetera. 
uh, your pin code access requirements. These are all Microsoft specific settings mm -hmm. and then start assigning conditional launch policies around what is the max allowed threat level of the device. So say, for example, I want to say I'm not going to allow any devices with a that are higher than medium to have access if the device is on a medium uh, it's basically a critical level event that's taking place on the device. We can block access to Outlook teams or any of the Office 365, uh, any of the Office 365 stack, or and also use MDM controls if the device is on the MDM perspective. We'll go ahead and click next and basically publish that out. Now, what that looks like from an enroll from a deployment standpoint is it's a very simple deployment at this at this point. The user is when they try to access Outlook, um, they'll go ahead and open it up. And what they see is uh, the account get their account gets set up, the organization app policies get applied, and then when they try to access Outlook after that policy has been pushed, they're now told, "Hey, you need to have Zips onto your device because of that integration in the policy." The user installs Zips onto the device. They then go ahead and can either use Microsoft authentication, or if they uh, bypass that, they go back to Outlook. Outlook says, "Great, you have Zips on the device, but." Zimperium needs to give us needs to give us a status mm -hmm. of is the device safe or not. So this takes care of the Zips authentication component. At which point Zips gets uh, set up, it gets activated with the appropriate um, items. Policies get pushed down for do we want to collect uh, what do we want to push down. Zips then ascertains if the device is safe or not based off of the policies that have been set by the admin. Uh, Outlook is able to recheck the status. Now the user's enabled to securely access Outlook at this point. Deployment's done. Take take took less, I think, than it took less than five minutes, I think, to get that set up at that point. Now, from a remediation standpoint, and what happens if a threat occurs? Well, this is all part of the automated uh, threat flow. So again, based off the threat policy, we can say if the device is on a critical threat or something along those lines, we want to block access. In this case, the device is in a normal threat environment nothing bad is happening. But let's say connect the device to, um, in this example, a rogue uh, Wi-Fi network. And I'll just kind of fast forward to this. We connect to the Union Station free Wi-Fi. Zips is going to detect some different aspects around the network, especially that's a rogue Wi-Fi network. Uh, we then tell uh, Outlook, hey, you're, this device is in a critical state through the network connection. The app access is blocked at that point. And then additionally, further on down, once the user gets off the network or we force disconnect the Wi-Fi as well, the, user, the Outlook is then re-allowed. Um, the access is, is basically re-allowed and the user is off and running to the races uh, with continued access at this point. So again, completely seamless deployment and integration. Uh, we can get the consoles talking in less than five minutes. We get the app uh, compliance policies. That's how we can enforce the enrollment and deployment of the Zips agent onto the device. And then with the integration for conditional launch, conditional access, and some of the app control policies, regardless if you're doing MDM management or MAM management, or if you're using all of the Microsoft EMM stack, or if you're using third-party EMM plus Office 365, we can account for all those different workflows with group-based policies and things of that nature to, to seamlessly be able to say, can this device be trusted or not at that point? That's perfect. That's perfect, Kern. And uh, if you can stop sharing your screen, I'll wrap this up. Um, and, you know, I, I think the, you know, kind of coming back again to, to this picture, right? That's, that's exactly what Kerm is just showing. Um, and with the conditional launch capability, working with Microsoft, for instance. So at its core, you know, what are the threats, right? Well, you have device network phishing app attacks and risks, the risks will make it more likely for an attack to succeed. You also have to account for, is it a managed versus unmanaged um, side of, of things? But ultimately you do need the ability to be able to detect those threats in real time and to be able to take immediate policy-based action back. Um, um, I, I personally am a huge fan of the BYOD approach that Microsoft has been taking. Um, all the office productivity apps um, you know, obviously O365 um, have the, the MAM SDK embedded in them. If, uh, if you have other apps themselves, like maybe internally produced apps, you can use the same SDK and have the same conditional capabilities, this zero trust capability that Kern was just talking about. 
where in, instead of clicking Outlook, you could collect, click a different app that was being protected and make different decisions. You might say, for instance, and Kern said, hey, if it's critical, we're not gonna allow access to Outlook. You might say, well, if it's medium level, you can still have a team session because maybe it's maybe it's not as risky. I wouldn't recommend that. I'm just using it as an example. Um, but you can start tailoring the the protections um, across the board. So um, just kind of to, to wrap up, and we're going to stop and and have questions here. You know, our recommended next step is Kern showed how easy this is to actually set up. Right. Our recommendation is, of course, from from this zero trust. If you have O365 on mobile devices give us a call, send us an email. My email is jt.keating at zimperium.com. Kearns is kern.smith at zimperium.com. Just shoot us an email. We'll get you set up on a pilot. You can see how easy this is. You can see what, what is the nature of what your devices are, are dealing with right now. Um, so with that, um, we are uh, like right at the 30 minute mark. We do have some questions. Um, so we might not hit all of them, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on some of them. Um, so Kern, let me uh, let me start with um, this question: uh, What are you doing to better partner with Microsoft to provide a better user experience with O365 and Intune? Um, well, yeah, we we continue to partner with Microsoft and kind of build out uh, different workflows, uh, some different things that. You know, we are, we've worked both with Microsoft, uh, such as with conditional access and conditional launch, especially on uh, when accessing any of the um, O365 apps it has been really great in driving, you know, the security and adoption side of the house. I think the other, the other side that we uh, continue to work on is, you know, additional workflows to support customers' use cases. If they're either they're enabling Office 365 apps uh, with, Intune uh, or Microsoft EMS, either from a pure man BYO perspective or a EMS um, MDM plus man perspective. Uh, but also uh, a lot of customers are looking at enabling Office 365, but they're using a third party MDM. So uh, having workflows that can leverage kind of the best of both worlds, both that third party MDMs capabilities of managing the device, but also leveraging the existing app protection policies and kind of the compliance enforcement that we can do on the MAM side within one single workflow and one single agent has been particular an area of particular um, interest for, for many customers and solve some you know, fundamental uh, problems that they have around, around that unified approach. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, Kern, you, you just knocked off a few of the other questions that we're in. Because, and by the way, it, it's great. Uh, I love where everybody's head's at when it comes to this, because there were a bunch of questions about, um, you know, uh, is, is Intune mandatory? What happens if you're using MDM for other devices? Can you do multiple? Um, and the fact that we can handle multiple to account for those use cases is huge, but people were asking those, those questions. Um, another question that came in um, specifically on the, the BYOD side, and this gets to our one of our um, benefits, again, from a on-device detection capability um, in terms of the privacy element. But um, do you see your customers deploying zips on BYOD? Do you share with the end user exactly what can be seen or shared with the organization? So maybe comment about privacy policies and the like. Yeah, the, the short answer is yes. Um, we do have uh, customers deploying on BYOD. In fact, that's been a huge um, use case, especially as uh, workforces have shifted remotely. Um, privacy is a huge component for us. Uh, we offer extremely granular privacy controls, uh, both from an admin perspective, but also um, displaying to the user, hey, what are different um, capabilities that are being leveraged in Zips and being as transparent as possible around uh, set of wizards, you know, um, if location is being asked for, what is it being used? Uh, but it's also part of, I think, of the success for our customer success organization in working with our different customers on their rollout messaging as well to their user community. Uh, because, you know, when we look at protecting these devices, uh, especially in a BYO scenario, users uh, actually are, are very interested in having some sort of enterprise protection on their device because they're not just concerned about Office 365, which we as organization are, uh, but they're also concerned about their personal banking information and all the personal data that's on the device. So it's actually interesting that uh, users are kind of clamoring for it, even on a BYO perspective, because of the type of personal data that they have on those devices as well. 
Right. There, there is another question in here, which, uh, which I will give back to folks on um, that, uh, that is um, around tax implications of, of doing BYOD because it gets back to the, the personal component. Um, there was one question about going back a slide to show the threats and the preventions. Um, so uh, uh, how about if we talk to you offline just to make sure I understand your, your question correctly in interest of time. Um, there was also a few questions around, have we seen active exploits of uh, the exchange vulnerability and or the iOS um, uh, fixes that just came in 14.4? Um, um, I, I know that, I actually, I'm not sure if we've seen either. Have you heard, Kern, um, from our, our threat research team? Um, I have not. Yeah, I haven't heard of anything directly. Um, it, it's something that, uh, you know, typically if we find a uh, zero day type of threat in the wild and threat data, we follow a responsible disclosure uh, process candidly. Um, so they tended to keep that data pretty far away from anybody on the sales side because uh, we want to make it, we want to let uh, vendors know about those those type of things uh, before we publish in the wild but I don't know of anything off the top of my head but um, we're not happy to follow up at the appropriate time that sounds good well in the interest of time I just want to thank everybody again um, feel free to reach out to us um, the uh, we have we have dozens of customers that are dealing with 0365 around the world on both managed and unmanaged devices um, and they are very, to, to Kern's point, actively sharing with us what is working, what needs to be improved, what their concerns are. Um, the other thing I think is pretty interesting is we're even seeing protecting O365 on Chromebooks. Um, so a large part being driven by teams being used for remote education. So it's just, it's a very, very hot topic. Um, and we're here to help anybody with perspectives on it. So thank everybody for your time. Kern, thank you very much as usual. And everybody have a great day. Always a pleasure. Take care.